What's going on guys? So today I'm going to be doing a POV drive in my 2008 Saab 93 Turbo X. Now as I do the drive I'll be talking about the car itself and be giving a bit of detail on what this car is exactly but I'll go ahead and start off by showing you guys the key fob here nothing special of course you have your lock and unlock right here and then your trunk and then this button right here this is the same key used on any 2003 to 2011 Saab 93 and this button right here just lights up the uh, the nice little eyebrow there as well as the uh, side markers and then if we come around here the rear lights which you can barely see in the sun so we're gonna go ahead unlocker get in and start her up now she has been sitting pretty much all day key goes down here in the center ignition of course and of course you get the nice little turbo x specific all systems go button so that's pretty cool but now i guess we're just going to go for a drive guys so i'll catch up with you in a bit so here we are cruising in the Turbo X. So I've had this car in my possession for about a week and a half now in Arizona. And I've put about 650 miles on her. So I bought it just around 171,000 miles. So today, we're just gonna talk about, I don't know, what it's like to drive it. And you guys can experience, you know, in your own sense, I guess, what it's like to drive it. So this car does, as you can tell, have the six speed manual transmission, which, is very nice. I'm just gonna start off by saying I do really, really like the six speed over the five speed. Um, I have driven a 9.3 with a five speed before. Now it was a four cylinder, but I just having that extra gear, it's just nice, you know? I, I really do like it. So one question I've gotten a lot on my first two videos that I've done of the Turbo XR, how much did you pay for it? Let's get this car for $8,000. And of course I had to pay for shipping as well. The shipping, which I've also gotten a lot of questions on with the fees and everything that the shipping companies tap, tack on are, uh, that was about $1,700 for me. This is the Turbo X, which means that it was made only for the 2008 model year. It was basically made to celebrate 30 years of Saab turbocharging. Now, under the hood of this car is a 2.8 liter turbocharged V6. Of course, it's gonna be turbocharged. I mean, it's called the Turbo X. But this motor is also found in the 9.3 Aero from 2006 to 2009. So it's not a motor that is exclusive to the Turbo X. Now, the power output on this car is 280 horsepower from factory and about 295 foot-pounds of torque. But this specific car has a very early stage one tune, which means that it's making about 300 horsepower. And my guess would be about 330 or so, maybe a little bit more or less, give or take, pound-feet of torque. But as you might be able to see on the screen right here, I am averaging 18.5 miles per gallon since I got this car. I reset it right when I got it, and I've I don't know, it's just kind of been what I've averaged. Now, I have heard that, you know, 18.5, that's not bad, but it's also not the greatest. I've heard people get 20 or sometimes even just a little bit better with this B284R motor. Probably one of my favorite things about this car so far, the Turbo X that I love, is this steering wheel. I mean, it is just so, like, it's almost like squishy soft. Like, not like spongy, but you can tell it's just like very well, like it's just leather wrapped. It's very nice and comfortable. I love the nice bolster here at I guess you'd say 10 and 2. The steering wheel buttons are very nice. If I'm looking a little crooked or something it's because the GoPro is pretty much right in front of my face and I'm kind of still getting used to it so I apologize if I'm crooked or if I'm shaking a lot here. But, but just looking at the uh, instrument cluster here it's very similar to every single other new generation 9.3 with the exception of the turbo gauge. So while we're cruising on this construction riddled road, well, I'll go ahead and show you guys a bit more of the infotainment stream. Now this car does not have the optional navigation, which in my opinion, I didn't really care about a whole lot. I mean, it looks a lot nicer, but it's not really that much more functional when you have Apple Maps or Google Maps or whatever else you need. I mean, you have your aux cord and that's what I need. So you've got your six presets, you can adjust your base and everything through here. I'm not gonna go through all that. This is more about driving the car now the car is not going to be at its quickest right now i am in the arizona summer as you can see 104 degrees right now it is a cooler day out here thankfully 
but the car's not going to be at its quickest right now. Once it cools down, I do kind of want to take it to a drag strip and see what it can run in the quarter mile. I'm really curious. Of course, Motor Trend and everything have tested that when they reviewed this car back when it was new, but I'm curious to see what I can do. But uh, just a little side note there. So pretty much every Saab out there is going to be front wheel drive. Now this car and a few other Saabs are called what's what's basically all wheel drive or what Saab calls cross wheel drive. Now this is a system that was developed jointly with Haldex and Saab. And basically it can distribute torque to just about any wheel as it feels necessary. Now when you're cruising on the highway, I've read that it's essentially a front wheel drive car for your best fuel economy, but when you need it, specifically at lower speeds when you get on it or at a launch, it can send about 85% of all your available torque to a single rear wheel. Now that would be more of like a high speed cornering situation, but you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool how it works. And of course with that cross wheel drive comes the more maintenance and the electronic limited slip differential. So it, it is pretty cool in that sense, you know. And uh, speaking of the service, I do have everything I need to do an all wheel drive or cross wheel drive service on this car. And that will be coming uh, probably fairly soon as I see a speed camera and notice I'm going a little bit too fast. Even though it's summer and school's not in session, thanks for having that out there, you know, completely unnecessary. This specific car is sitting on Maptune coilovers. Now Maptune, it's just about the only company that makes coilovers for the Turbo X or any cross wheel drive Saab. So the ride is pretty good on it and I do quite like it. Now I gotta slow down so I don't scrape right here. So the short throw shifter in this car, I don't mind it. I mean, I honestly, I can't remember exactly how the other manual 9.3 felt that I drove. For those of you that have installed short shifters on your 9.3s, you can attest how big of a difference it made, but I honestly can't, you know, I can't give a, uh, a fair analysis on if it's if it makes a huge difference or not. But I, I, I like it, you know, it shifts very smooth. I'm pretty sure the clutch has been done on this car. Hey, there's another Saab, Saab! Okay. Uh, let's get back on track. That's about the only other facelifted 9.3 that lives in my area and the fact that it happened to be there right when I was recording, that's uh, that's pretty cool guys. I bet they didn't even notice me, but you know, that's just, uh, that's just the Saab life. So I was considering filming a video at night with this car and that would mostly feature the night panel button, which of course I hit it now and you just see everything go dark, but it does do a lot of cool little tricks and stuff. So if you guys are curious on what it's like to drive with night panel on, you can go ahead and check out the video that I'll put in one of these corners up here that I did in my other 9.3, uh, where I basically just did the same thing, a POV drive, but with night panel on and just kind of talking all about it and whatnot. So the brakes are definitely a step up from your standard uh, four-cylinder Saab or your standard arc or what you want to call it. I'm going to go ahead and just turn in right here and just do a quick brake test from about 30 miles an hour. Got no one behind me again. I'm not doing anything dangerous. Oh my god, I stalled. Oops. That was not very smart of me to, uh, to do that. Okay. So, brakes work well, right? Well enough to uh, stall the car. Um, I'm a little uh, out of it right now, clearly. I, I, I didn't think uh, sunglasses went flying. But uh, let's just let's just make a U-turn and pretend that didn't happen. So I'm just, we're just gonna say the uh, the brakes are adequate, right? They're, they're good, the brakes are good. So we are gonna take a short break right here and I do wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. So we'll go ahead and cut to that right now. I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Foxwell. They sent me out this awesome OBD2 scanner. So I'm just gonna do a quick run through on the Turbo X real quick and use this to just make sure there's nothing wrong. There's no fault codes or anything that I know of, but I guess this is going to tell us. And if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these, they're actually on sale right now on Amazon and you can use the link in the description to get a discount on them too. So let's plug in the Turbo X here and hopefully pray that nothing is wrong. We're just gonna go through here. This thing has a ton of options more than I will ever need. Okay, zero codes found. And just like most other OBD2 scanners, if my camera will focus, you can read the codes, erase the codes, you can get live data for the car, just a ton of other information 
that you might need if you're a mechanic or if you're just curious to know more about your car, you can check on here. But that is the Foxwell OBD2 scanner. Again, link for it down in the description if you guys are interested. Let's get back to the video. So the seats in this car, I'll let you go ahead and uh, look at the uh, the passenger seat, which is identical to the driver's seat. They're very comfortable. Now, if I'm being 100% honest, I don't like them as much as I like the 9.5 Aero seats in my dad's 9.5. Those are just, I don't know, I feel like they just hug you better and they keep you in place much better than these do. I mean, these are still amazing seats and I still love these seats to death, but they're just, they're just not as comfortable as the 9.5 Aero seats and that's just my opinion. So turbo lag, there's not a whole lot of it, you know, this, this isn't a... It's not a uh, it's not a very big turbo, so it spools up pretty quick. I should probably slow down. But you know, you you can get you can find yourself going uh, pretty quick, pretty fast. It's very easy to overtake someone if you want to. You honestly don't even have to drop a gear if that, especially when you're cruising on the freeway, you can overtake someone in sixth gear pretty easily. So the power is very readily there. I believe it makes its peak torque very low in the rev range. I think it's a, I think it's below 2000 RPM and peak power of course is up above five grand, but the torque is there. The torque, this is a very torquey motor similar to uh, basically every other Saab that I've experienced. They're all very torque heavy. They're more about torque than they are horsepower. Now one other thing I figured I'd discuss in this video is the exhaust. So this car does have a muffler delete. You probably can't hear much of it, if anything, in this video. Now, it doesn't drone at all, and that's what I love. But at the same time, it can be a little bit too quiet when I really get on it and I want to hear that V6, especially that turbo. You can hear the turbo. Uh, spool up especially when you get on it, but it, it does sound pretty cool But at the same time it might be a little bit too quiet for for my taste now I'm not saying I'm going to straight pipe it because I definitely will not straight pipe this car But I, I might make it just a little bit louder down the road But for now it's staying as is and I do I do really really love it So if you're wondering what that little light is down on the tachometer, that's actually the cruise control uh, that I had Turned on which is kind of annoying. I don't like that. It's such a big light and it's kind of always apparent but to set that you have your left stock here that you also use for the turn signal so as you can see the uh, the road i'm on right now is not the best paved but it's handling it fairly well of course you do feel all the bumps and everything a bit more with the coilovers but i mean the the ride in this is not it's not bad at all and i i definitely do not have any complaints about it. it's good enough for a daily driver. I mean, I, I have zero complaints really so far. I mean, I guess outside the fuel economy, but I knew that was coming. So <laughs> can't really complain too much about that, but I'm gonna stop rambling. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see y'all next time.